Hello, my name is Alex Strout, and today I'd like to talk about one of the AI projects I've worked on in my spare time called Foxbot for the indie fan game Sonic Roboblast 2, which is a 3D platforming game built off of a heavily modified version of the Doom Legacy engine. The main design goals of Foxbot were to, one, build an AI companion bot that was usable in a multiplayer cooperative environment. Two, allowing it to perform any actions that a player might perform, such as using the various character and item abilities, or independently moving around to fight enemies and collect power-ups. Three, writing movement logic that could account for the game's momentum and inertia physics. And finally, four, keeping all this within a reasonable performance envelope as the game targets lower spec and mobile devices. So for the first design goal of building an AI companion bot for multiplayer, it's worth noting that the game actually has a native bot in the form of Sonic and Tails mode in single player. However, this mode only supports a single bot following a single player. All of the AI state is globally tracked, so there is no support for multiple bots in a single session. Foxbot allows this by storing this information on a per-player basis and utilizing the existing player input systems to allow multiplayer support with no changes to the existing networking logic. As a bonus, this also allows players to voluntarily turn themselves into a bot and trade off control with the AI at any time, similar to something like Left 4 Dead's Take a Break mode. For the second design goal of allowing the bot to perform any actions that a player might and also demonstrate more independent behavior, a new targeting system was written to allow the bot to pursue objectives other than simply following the player. Active enemies are prioritized over passive power-ups, and we won't steal useful items like shields unless our leader already has one or indicates that they'd like us to take it. This was mostly intended to pleasantly surprise the player with behaviors that they might not have been expecting the AI to be able to do. It also helps keep them valuable. For example, in Chaos Mode, a wave-based cooperative horde mode, it's possible for solo or small groups of players to achieve higher scores and better results than they might otherwise be able to on their own. For the third design goal of writing movement logic that could properly account for the game's physics, the AI actually uses a system similar to what you might see in a missile intercepting a target. So as the bot is moving around, it's constantly resolving a desired movement vector, which is a function of its target's position and velocity minus its own velocity, multiplied by a time to target factor which is itself a function of the total distance divided by the difference in velocities. And the reason we do all this is because the movement in the game has a lot of inertia to it. So if you're moving in a particular direction and you want to stop, you have to actually begin moving in the opposite direction to bring yourself to a halt. Think of it kind of like piloting a spaceship in a vacuum. And when we put all this together, we can more effectively accomplish our life goals of following the player, dispatching enemies, and collecting power-ups. Finally, let's talk about performance. For the fourth design goal of keeping all this reasonably performant, a couple precautions were taken. For instance, what would otherwise be repeated calculations are simply cached into local variables. Branch conditionals have the most unlikely conditions evaluated first to utilize short-circuiting. And potentially expensive tasks like target evaluation are rate-limited to twice a second, spread out across all the bots so that only one is doing this per frame. This target searching also uses the existing collision data near the bot instead of simply iterating through all the actors in the level. Unfortunately, I couldn't capture any footage from my phone, but in testing a multiplayer session with eight bots connected to my 2015 Moto XT, which is a Snapdragon 808, I registered a performance difference of about 600 microseconds, with a single bot coming in at about 70, within a total budget of probably around 2,000 microseconds, or 2 milliseconds per frame. All right, so in conclusion, I felt that Foxbot was able to meet each of its four design goals 
while hopefully providing the player with a unique and entertaining AI bot companion. I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks so much for watching.